can all agree that 2020 was a tough year for just about all of us. And for us, this is how it ended on New Year's Eve. A 40 mile per hour side impact directly into the rear wheel of our Model X. Initially, the damage actually looked only cosmetic, but hidden behind that wheel, there was so much more. And at roughly 6,000 pounds, our Tesla Model X felt as though it barely budged when struck by the Accord on direct impact. In fact, in this remarkable test footage, the Model X became the first and only SUV to ever achieve a NHTSA five-star safety rating in every category and subcategory, with the lowest probability of rollover and injury of any SUV. When I saw the impact of what actually happened, instantly I knew that your car was hurt more than the cosmetic appearance. After speaking with the police for a few hours and taking care of the paperwork, this is what happened immediately after I pulled out of the parking lot. A complete spin out in the middle of an intersection as the rear wheels felt like they were darting in different directions. That's when I realized this was a much bigger problem than it appeared to be. Today, we're gonna take you behind the scenes of a Tesla certified repair shop for a look at how the experts handle Tesla crashes, get you the answers on why the lengthy delays for repairs, how it could be avoided, and yes, you'll find the astronomical costs involved in a repair like this. It's like crazy to keep my car like that, oh my God. It's like wild. I remember like when I initially looked at it, I, this part right here, I thought it was just like minor damage. I didn't look, seem like it was like a big thing. Right, so it's all designed to kind of crush in and absorb the impact. So that way you're not impacted as, as much. It felt like, honestly, like when you slam on your brakes really hard or something, like it didn't feel like a big jolt. I felt totally fine. Right. I had my like little baby in the car with me. She mm -hmm. didn't even make a peep. Um, so I was very impressed. From that aspect. So that's why these parts, the way Tesla designs this car is to basically have crush zones. Those crush zones take the impact and keep you safe. So your car was impacted fairly hard if you watch the video. And for you to say you felt nothing just shows you the, the safety of these cars. Um, we work on them daily and I'm, and I'm always, you know, kind of mind blown by how they perform in an accident. You know, the cool parts, the, the technology, all that stuff's great. You know, not having to buy gas is great but the safety for me is the biggest key with these things. So this is my subframe and my rear motor right here. Wow. Driven Collision is one of a handful of Tesla approved body shops in Metro Atlanta and came with high praise for its service and efficiency in Tesla repairs. Our car was initially brought to Tesla, who told us since the damage was partly structural and needed to come here. That's the biggest thing with insurance companies is they just want us just to, you know, hey, just pull that out and, and don't worry about it. And it's like, no, listen, this was designed a certain way and I could never duplicate these by just repairing it like that. Alan and his team have over 60 years of experience in the automotive space, working on everything from the average daily drivers to Lamborghinis and in the past six years on Teslas. All of this was impacted in here. So not only was this part here, but your suspension shoved over and got into your towers here. So, so that is what I noticed. So I tried to drive it right afterwards yes. and I felt like I was just on ice. So your suspension is, it was hurt the most. Your suspension was actually fighting itself. One tire was going this way and one tire was going this way. So this piece right here, let's say you take this piece off of the car. This quarter panel is the most expensive part on your car to damage. So lucky for you, Tesla has a lower section here that you can replace just this lower section. They have a procedure for it. If they did not have this section, the whole rear end of your car would be taken apart. This whole corner would be cut off. But Tesla, you know, kind of forced out that and they came up with the lower extension repair. This part, if you ever see anyone that says they just had a big, you know, a dent here, this is a very, the most expensive 100% really? part of but the what car. What does this one part run? I would guess in anywhere from 20,000, you know, to, to, but you got to remember there's the outer part and then there's the inner. So it's, I was lucky that it was like down here versus up here. Very. As soon as whenever, whenever we saw, I saw the video, I was like, oh man, she's going to need a quarter, which is not a big deal. We can still do a quarter panel, but the time delay is definitely 
extensive because of the labor. Um, when we saw it was just this lower extension, we were very relieved as long as the parts were available and the parts were available. So I have a question for you. Okay. So especially when the Model 3 was coming out, Tesla got a, a lot of people complaining about things like panel gaps and fit and finish mm -hmm. issues. Is that something that you see more with Tesla or is that something like you would see across like all cars, but maybe people are talking more because it's Tesla? All right, so man, I have to t I have to tiptoe, but the reality <laughs> the reality of that is be if, honest. I'm gonna I'm going to okay. be honest. If you were so Tesla customers are very specific, uh -huh. um, and their guards are up. It's almost like you thought that your car would be here for three months because of what you've heard. Mm -hmm. So instantly, one bad review on panel gaps. Instantly, you're like, I have to check these panel gaps. If you checked a Rolls Royce, if you checked a Lamborghini, if you checked all these cars as hard as some of these Tesla customers are checking them, you would find out that the paint on these high-end cars, there's, you know, there's defects in those paint. The panel gaps are not perfect. There are things that, that rattle. It's just a, across the board. When you're, when you're building cars, you know, that's gonna happen. Um, so the same, the same things I hear from Tesla customers, I also hear from Rolls Royce customers. Um, the biggest thing I see is that your Rolls Royce customer just expects it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So they never really check it. Whereas a Tesla customer expects it to have something wrong and they find it. I just feel like Tesla customers are very sensitive to some of the gaps and rightfully so. Some of them need to be adjusted, but I see those, you know, those yeah. same issues across the board. That's interesting. Tesla is a very technical group of people. Okay. So they can tell you the distance by percentages of how far their cars go. Whereas, you know, Corvette owners couldn't tell you how far the car goes. They're not technical people. They, they, they may be some, there may be some, but in, from what I see with the, with the Tesla customers, they're very specific, almost engineerish mm -hmm. um, with their thought process. And it relays over to how they feel about their vehicles. All right, guys, I want to take a moment and thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. So safety and security are two areas that we take very seriously. And I think that's pretty obvious in this video as one of the safest cars ever built actually protected us during this crash. But when it comes to security of our family on the web, it can be a lot more complicated than just picking the right car. So I want to tell you about the all in one solution that we've been really happy with for a while now. Most people aren't even aware of the amount of surveillance, limitation, and data mining that's done on their personal information every time they're online. Surfshark VPN, or Virtual Private Network, can stop sites from tracking your info and selling targeted ads to you, which I think is just one of the creepiest things in the world when you're talking about something and then all of a sudden it just appears right there ready for you to buy it. So Surfshark VPN is an easy to use solution that turns you into an anonymous and hard to trace online user and makes the internet a safer and more enjoyable place. We use Surfshark every day. It automatically starts up when we start our computer and they offer a 30 day money back guarantee so there's no risk. See the link in the description below and enter the promo code KimJava for 83% off and three extra months for free. All right, let's get back to it now. So I know a lot of people complain that when you have to order parts mm -hmm. from Tesla, it slows down the repair a lot, but it seems like you were able to, from what I'm hearing is my car's gonna be ready by the end of the week, probably. That is our goal for so, sure. So like, what can you say about, about the process of repairing Teslas and how long it takes typically and? So what I've found is there's on both sides, we can't just sit as a body shop it's ourselves and point at Tesla, right? There's lots of things that we do to delay a process as well. Um, the scapegoat is Tesla parts because for years they did have issues with parts. Um, they have made some new changes. There's parts distribution in Atlanta now versus, you know, back in the day you had to order from California and then it would come here. And if it was damaged, you had to wait for another order from California. The biggest delay is going to be with the insurance company, in my opinion. If I could just write one estimate send it in, they approve it and order the parts. That is the easiest way to do it. But unfortunately we write an estimate and then they, you know, they only do 50% and then you write another estimate, you know, and then they, they go to 75. So by the time they get to the hundred percent, you're probably two weeks in before we can even order that, the, you know, the proper parts for your car. Um, something we're doing to combat that is we're actually going ahead and ordering the parts that we know eventually they have to approve. Um, go ahead and get it on the front side. Even though I haven't been compensated yet, I know with your help on my side that we can make sure the insurance company compensates us. So we go ahead and pre-order the parts, um, get the parts in here, you know, coming before the insurance company even approves. 
because I know they have to approve the damage. They mm -hmm. owe you that. And then at that point in time, you know, the parts arrive, everything kind of shows up on time and, and we do our part. Yeah, I've so. been I've been very impressed because I was, when I heard that we had to order parts, I was like, oh no, this yeah. is gonna take like two or three months to get yeah. my car back. I mean, just think about it. If there was a three week back order on a part, let's just say, but the insurance company takes a month before they approve the proper part because they're trying to save money, save money here, you know, whatever. That, that part is, you know, seven weeks out, you know, just, but the delay is not really, the, the big part is not the part itself, it's the delay getting to the, you know, the correct parts ordered from the insurance company allowed, approved. This is our paint department. Um, this is the USI Italia booth. It's phenomenal. Um, Tesla's actually installing them in some of their body shops around the nation. Um, it just, it, it cures the paint. A lot of paint booths, they just, uh, they, they warm, they, they heat. Um, this one cures the paint from the bottom out. So whenever your bumper is painted and completed, I know for a fact that it's ready for your, your paint protection film. Um, at a lot of body shops, you'll hear them say, you know, give me two to three weeks before we put the clear film on top. With ours, I know it's ready for your paint protection film because of this booth and what it does. Tesla has a strict guideline of parts that must be replaced in order to retain the vehicle's structural integrity as if it were brand new from the factory. In a little over 30 days, our vehicle underwent a replacement of suspension parts from control arms, hub, axle, caliper, and the rear wheel itself. There were also body parts such as the lower panel, pressure vents, splash shields, and rear bumper that were replaced. Her Tesla Driven Collision also replaced over 300 bolts, nuts, and rivets as well. Driven also facilitated the rewrap and ceramic coating of our bumper from AP3. In total, the end estimate from the insurance company came out to roughly $17,000. We used traveler's insurance and we were told they were very understanding of Tesla's guidelines and easy to work with, which can play a big role in how long your repairs can take. Some insurance companies will have you believe that because the Tesla costs so much, you could repair it for $60,000. Well, you could, but what justice am I doing to customer if I do that? So what I do is I get with the customer and let them know that, hey, the best, you know, there's too many pieces and components that you're trusting me to, to do here. I think it's best for you to let this car go. Um, it's not that we're not capable, but it's just once you dig into a car that deep, it's just better off just to total the car, let you move on to a new Tesla, mm -hmm. and uh, and we keep it moving. But what other... happens to it at that point? Like so, what would happen to the totaled car? So insurance company- Other than rich rebuilds. <laughs> <laughs> so Tesla is very smart. So they don't want, you know, rebuilt totals on the street. So they can control the computers and everything else to make sure the car, once the car is totaled, you don't own the car anymore. I believe they shut the computer down to where it doesn't necessarily work like it's supposed to. Um, a totaled car is, in my opinion, is totaled for a reason, mm -hmm. you know? And the people that buy these cars and rebuild them and fix them, they're not, they're not doing it to Tesla standards. They're doing it to a cosmetic appearance, put you in the car and you feel safe and then it doesn't perform an accident, you get, an ac you know, get hurt. And, you know, Tesla's going, wow, this is not good for us. But every manufacturer, you know. I'll leave you with this. The morning after our accident, Elon tweeted this. Tesla's full self-driving will work at a safety level well above that of an average driver this year. That, I'm confident. Can't speak for regulators, though. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, the biggest thank you we can get is your support by clicking that like button. And if you want more unique content such as this, be sure you're subscribed to this channel. Do check out our website, itskimjava.com, for some really fun and unique EV and Tesla inspired gear. We've got shirts with some of Elon's best quotes, cookie cutters in the shape of Teslas, including the Cybertruck, screen protectors, and plug and play Sentry USBs. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next time. It has a wrap on it. Okay. So after this, do you know how that works? Yeah, they so, haven't told me. Yeah, so essentially what we would do is we have to build the vehicle back up. Mm -hmm. um, before we you know, put the bumper on, we're gonna make sure all the parts are correct. Um, suspension has to be in it. We'll put the bumper onto the car, and then at that point in time, we would have a, an outside vendor come in and install the wrap for you. Um, unless you have a, a place that you want to take it to yourself that's perfectly fine but we try and do it all in-house for customers so that way you're not having to drive all over town um, the insurance companies will pay to have it replaced if you have an invoice from your original install what you see is the obvious the outside is obviously pushed in but there's also interconnecting parts here that are glued together so when this is pushed in it moves this part as well 
So what they don't want to see us do is traditional body shots would just grab this or glue to it and they would pull it out, right? Well, Tesla says that's a no-no because you don't know what happens to the structural integrity at the, at the bond joints. Can you also tell us a little bit about that relationship with Tesla Service Center and some of the training that you guys have to go through to get certified to work on Tesla? Well, so, so Tesla has basically, they make you take courses. Um, your, your technicians have to be certain certifications through welding. Um, once they get to that level, Tesla provides you with a, a document showing to do A, B, C, D, just a very thorough. Tesla does a very good job with that. So um, as far as I'm concerned, a, a Tesla certified tech is, is great to have, but also having the repair procedures that come with the Tesla certification is phenomenal. I mean, I don't, there's not another car manufacturer that I've seen that documents every bolt that you have to replace everything that needs to be done and tesla does a good job with that but i can send a picture of your vehicle to tesla and they will give me a response um versus if i was dealing with another manufacturer if i send in a picture of the damage i may never hear back you know for for a minute at least okay. these are the extension pieces that you saw here um that go on the outside of your car um just nothing real real important but you feel, feel how light it is it's an aluminum oh, yeah. piece it's aluminum, so aluminum is very light. Yeah. Um, that probably helps with the with the mileage on the vehicle. Yeah. Everyone thinks that oh, it's just a Tesla. You can work on it. You can. You could probably work on it, but if you don't have the proper equipment to do it, so that's where a company such as Spinezi or Select, that's the name of the frame the frame benches that everyone's using. Car bench. There's others, um, but you have to literally build jigs to hold the car st stable, so when you cut it apart, the car doesn't move. Um, so from what I see is, you know, going to a certified shop is very important because they have the equipment that that OEM manufacturer says can be worked on the car. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, I would say your average body shop does not spend the money on the equipment. Um, there's body shops everywhere. There's collision centers everywhere. Um, the difference is a shop that's willing to invest in their equipment. Um, and, and, and I see it time and time again, cars being repaired at shops that they shouldn't be. So. It is really nice. Look at all that, too. So, question for you. Has the pandemic affected your business at all? Um, to say no would be an understatement. you got to think there's probably 30%, 40% of the cars that should be driving, you know, on the street. Um, you know, this road usually is typically stop, you know, bumper to bumper traffic, at, you know, multiple hours throughout the day. And unfortunately now it's, it's pretty much no, you know, not a lot of traffic at all. I get to a fence, I got you mad. I guess that when I get to it last, get it that I'm never going back, get it that I'm never going back, I get to it first, I got you.